In this lecture, we're gonna be talking about something called gamut masking. Now, gamut masking is basically where you limit your color palette. And we talked about this a little bit before, how limiting your color palette actually makes your paintings look much better and your color selection look much better. And there's different ways we can do this. Now, everybody's software is a little bit different and there are softwares out there that can specifically, um, you can take a color um, circle like this and you can actually mask off different areas and it's very customizable and stuff but since we're working in different softwares and stuff like that and Photoshop doesn't really have this capability I'm just going to show you how you can create your own gamut masks just very simply by using either the erase tool or by deleting areas of the color circle so right here I have the color circle you can download this as a resource in this lecture as a PNG it'll have a transparent background and once you've done that you can either import it into a Photoshop file or you can go ahead and open it up in Photoshop, go ahead and select it, copy it, and then let's just go ahead and paste it into a new document with a white background. So here's a color circle, and we're gonna go ahead and make a few copies of these color circles so that we can edit them without, without messing them up completely. So let's start with our first layer one. So like I said, gamut masking is just limiting the color palette. And we can physically do that by taking a color circle like this that has all the different colors and all of the saturation levels. So as you can see, once it moves in towards the middle, it becomes gray. So we don't have values included in this, but we can always control the values manually ourselves. We mostly just wanna focus on the saturation of the colors. So first off, let's do one example where we're going to limit um, most of the colors except for our main color. So this would kind of be sort of what we were doing before where colors that are, let's say that green is our main color. So I'll go ahead and select green. Let's say green is our main color. So that means that if the complementary color is purple, so I'll go ahead and select purple, that means that we want it very desaturated. So somewhere over here, almost a gray purple. So we don't wanna hardly have any purple in our painting. Now this is not the only color palette or the only way you can color it. As you'll see as we create more gamut type patterns, you're gonna see that you can actually paint with more saturated colors. It just depends on what you wanna do. So, so the way we'll do this is let's go ahead and let's take our marquee tool. So we haven't gone over the marquee tool but your software should have some sort of a tool where you can make rectangular or circle selections. And we'll go ahead and drag out a circle. I'm gonna hold down shift to make it a perfect circle. That's how you do it in Photoshop. And once you do that, you can go ahead and click that and drag that. And basically anywhere we drag this around the circle, whatever edge it's touching, that's going to be our main color. So let's say that we want our main color to kind of be this lime green color. So the edge is touching right there. And now you can see that if we go ahead and invert the selection, so in Photoshop, it's gonna be Command Shift I. And then you can see that now it's selecting this outside area. I can go ahead and hit delete and it will delete everything outside of there. And this is what we want. So now you can see that it only really allows us to select colors that are either very saturated green, and we can also pick desaturated green, but you can see over here we're limited to the purples and reds that we can pick up in blues. They're very desaturated in this area because the whole saturated area over here got cut off. So now we can't even pick those colors if we wanted to. So what we can do now is let's go ahead and let's start selecting some colors. Maybe I'll select a little bit more of a desaturated green and let's start making a color palette. So let's say that we wanna have that green right there and we can just start moving around the circle. So we'll grab kind of that mint green then a little bit of a teal turquoise color. We'll just keep moving all the way around. All right, so there's some colors from our color palette, our gamut mask. And it's called a mask because we're masking the color spectrum. So we're cutting off all the areas where we don't wanna choose colors from. And you can see here that all those colors, they actually look very nice together. That's a very nice color palette. And it's because we limited our colors uh, rather than just being able to use all the colors in any color we want, we limited it. And we can also go ahead and just go in there with our eye picker and just go ahead and drop down the value a little bit so that it's a little bit darker. We can do that, let's say three times on each one. Do the same thing for this guy. 
And so, like I said before, your values don't have to do with your color palette. So once you have your colors chosen or you have your gamut mask created, you can make them as light or as dark as you like. Now, I'm just creating this color palette right now just to demonstrate to you the different colors and the different values and how good they look together. But remember that when you're doing these gamut masks, you don't actually have to do this. You can just color pick directly off your gamut mask and then just change the values as you want. And also if we wanted to, we could go ahead, let's select one of these colors, we can make them lighter too. So this is about in the middle of our value, so I can go ahead and bring that up. And we can make lighter versions of those. We don't just have to stick with dark versions. We can make them as light or as dark as we like. Let's go ahead and make this guy dark. You can see that all these colors look really good together. This is a very nice and cohesive color palette. Now let's try a few experiments and let's see if we can create some different gamut max masks and see how those look. So I'm gonna go ahead and turn this layer off and I'll turn on a new one that I created a copy of. So in this version, actually, I'll turn this back on real quick. In this version, you can see that we have pretty saturated greens and blues and yellows over here because we're using a circle. Um, but if we were to use a raindrop type of shape instead, so this time I'm just going to use my eraser just to keep it nice and simple. If I just use my eraser, I'm just going to erase kind of a straight line coming across like that. So I'll start by erasing out kind of a a triangle or arrow shape. Now this doesn't have to, be, have to be perfect if you kind of go over a little bit like that. It's not that big of a deal. Um, there's no perfect gamut mask. And then, and then what we can do is we can go ahead and let's actually angle that a little bit more to really restrict those saturated colors. So really the only saturated colors we get now are the ones up here at the tip of our pizza slice. And then we'll, let's go ahead and we're going to curve this around into this gray area like that. And then we can erase all of these saturated colors. And so by doing this, we basically just cut out highly saturated colors except for our main color, which is this lime sort of yellow green color. So if we were to go ahead and select some of these, you can see I can go ahead and select that green. I'll put that down like that. Now this green is a lot less saturated, so it's a much more desaturated green. I can grab this sort of teal blue, this purple, this red, this orange, this color right here. It comes back up into the yellows. But as you can see, now we only get these saturated colors kind of in that area, and all these other ones over here, they become much more desaturated. And this is also a nice um, color palette. Let's go ahead and let's try another one. So another thing we can do is you can try all different types of gamut masks. You can experiment, um, erase out different areas and see what happens when you use the colors that you're left with. One that is pretty popular is to create a diamond. So what we'll do is let's create a diamond, but let's create it a little bit further in from these edges so we don't have super saturated colors. So we'll start it, say right about here, and I'm just using my straight lasso tool. And then let's go ahead and click out to here. So we want the green side to be very desaturated, and then we wanna get a pretty saturated yellow. And then we wanna do the same thing on the red side. So very desaturated red like that. And then we can go ahead and invert our selection, and then go ahead and hit delete. And that's what we're left with. Now you could do this by erasing as well. You can do it however you want. But basically we just wanna get rid of some of these colors that are too saturated so that we have a limited color palette. And now if we go ahead and we take some of these colors, let's take some blue, put that blue down like that. And so now we're kind of breaking our rule from earlier, which is putting highly saturated 
complementary colors next to each other. And you can do this, this is fine. You just wanna make sure for the most part that not all of your colors are completely saturated. So if you're gonna do this, you definitely wanna make sure that these colors that are kind of a quarter angle away from them, from the complementary color and the main color are very desaturated. So we can put this yellow and blue next to each other, but then as we start moving down, you'll see that it becomes much more desaturated. So now, you can, as you can see, we have a very limited palette here, but just with this palette, by changing the values and stuff like that, you could create a very beautiful painting. All right, let's have a look at one more example. So these have all been um, kind of rigid shapes. There's been a circle, a diamond, and a raindrop type of a shape, but sometimes you can just go ahead and erase out kind of, in a way, random shapes, and then just test it out and see what that color spectrum or color palette looks like. So for example, let's say that we wanted to go ahead and let's just erase out kind of a shape like this. Let's say we wanted some reddish orange colors to be our main color. And then let's say we want to get a little bit of yellow in there. So we'll go give a little bit of yellow right there. And then let's keep the blue area pretty desaturated like that. And then we can go ahead and erase the rest of this. And as you can see, I just erased a very organic shape. And I just kind of selected um, in my mind which colors I wanted to keep and which ones I wanted to get rid of. So I decided that my I wanted some very saturated orange colors. I decided I want a little bit of saturated yellows. And then I decided that the blue area is going to be very desaturated. So now with these colors, you can see that we get some pretty, a pretty nice palette of colors. like that. Now, let's go ahead and let's do a quick project. So I'm gonna go ahead, I'm gonna select all this. I'm just gonna move it over a little bit so it's kind of out of the way. And I'm gonna do a painting of a sphere and I'm gonna use this color palette right here. Now keep in mind, I can change the value so I have lighter and darker values, but I want it to stay within those colors. So let's go ahead and let's get started. So first what, what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna go ahead and I'm just going to start by kind of painting out the shape of a bowl. So I'll just stick with the color I have right now. I'm just going to darken it so I can see it a little bit better. Let's go ahead and let's sketch out a bowl. Then let's go ahead and let's sketch out a shadow. So this doesn't have to be a perfect painting. I just want to get across the idea that we can use this color palette and make a pretty nice looking painting. All right, let's say that our light source is coming from right here, something like that. And let's say that this light source is a warm color. So let's go with this yellow color over here for our highlight. And this is gonna be a pretty extreme example, but that's okay, it'll, it'll really help you understand. So I've selected that yellow. Now our highlight, we want to be pretty bright. So what I'll do is I can go ahead and brighten this up. So I'm gonna bring this to right about there in my color tray. And then I can go ahead and start painting in that highlight. Like that. And we can also desaturate a little bit too. We can always desaturate colors that we have in our color palette, but we can never oversaturate them. So you don't ever wanna drag your colors past the max saturation, which all these colors I laid out right here, these are their max saturation. So we can desaturate it, but we don't wanna oversaturate it. So I can pull it more towards the white and get a little bit of a brighter sort of highlight, with less color in it, something like that. Next, let's go ahead and select the next warmest color, which I would say is green. So I'm gonna go ahead and select this sort of teal green right there. And where it's at right now is good, because this is going to be a mid-tone shadow, so let's just leave it right there about in the mid-value area. And I'll go ahead and paint this in, like this. We'll come back and blend this in a little bit more in a second. For now, I just wanna quickly get those colors in there. I'm also gonna go ahead and take this color and put it right back here, like that. 
for my bounce light. Perfect. Then let's go ahead and move on. Let's grab something like this purple. That's basically on the opposite side of the yellow, so it's the most desaturated, so the coolest color we have from the yellow. So I'll go ahead and select that, or I guess I can select this purple right here. And I'm gonna go ahead and bring that down and make it pretty dark. So I'll put it about there. I'll go ahead and paint that in. And then we wanna use the same color for the shadow. I'll bring my brush size down a little bit, just so we can get a little bit more detail in there. And then I'm just gonna take my color picker tool, I'm gonna to reselect some of these colors, and I'm just gonna go back in there and redetail this out, and also blend it. The way we can blend it is, let's go ahead, we can take some of this sort of green color and paint it over the purple part, and then I'll go ahead and select the color in between that got um, overlaid, and then I'll go ahead and just paint that in nice and opaque, like that. And I'll continue to just go ahead and do this all the way across the sphere. I'm going to go ahead and time lapse this real quick because you don't really need to watch me do this in real time. And I'll see you when I'm done. Alright, so there we go. I just went ahead and I painted the sphere and I used the color palette I had here and like I said, I changed the value. So this core shadow, for example, I really darkened it from its original purple color um, and I really lightened this yellow color. And I also even took the liberty to take this orange color or this red color, which is our main color, and I really desaturated it. Um, in some areas because I felt like it was a little bit too much. It was a little bit too saturated. So I desaturated that just to kind of help the image not be so busy. Um, but there you go. And you can see that this looks, it looks pretty nice. Um, it, this is kind of an experimental type of gamut mask. And so you might wa not want to go with something like this. It works, it worked out pretty well, but if you went with something a little bit more proven like the diamond or the raindrop or the circle, which just cuts out about half of the colors on one side, you're gonna get really good results. So that brings us to the end of this lecture. So just remember, all you have to do is just take this color circle and just cut out and limit your color palette a little bit, and that will help your images look much better. Thanks for watching, and I'll see you in the next lecture.